Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh My name is Dirta Anissa Putri Here I would like to retell a story about the story of an hour It's created by Kat Kelvin This story was first published in 1894 as the dream of an hour before being republished under the title in 1895. Knowing that Mrs. Mallard was afflicted with a heart trouble, great care was taken to break to her as gently as possible the news of her husband's death. It was her sister Josephine, who told her in broken sentences, felt hints that revealed in half counseling. Her husband's friend Richard was there too, near her. It was he who had been in the newspaper office when intelligence of the railroad disaster was received, with Brantley Mallard's name. Leading the list of guilt, he had only taken the time to assure himself of its truth by a second telegram, and had hastened to forestall any less careful, less tender friend in bearing the sad message. She didn't hear the story as many women have heard the same. With a paralyzed inability to accept its significance, she wept at once, with sudden will abandonment in her sister's arms. When the storm of grief had spent itself, she went away to her room alone. She would have no one follow her. There stood, facing the open window. A comfortable, roomy armchair, into this season, pressed down by a sickle accusation that haunted her body and seemed to reach into her soul. The cold sea and the open square before her house, the tops of trees that were all a fire with the new spring life. The daily sush breath of rain was. Of rain was in the air. In the street below, a peddler was crying his wares. The notes of a distant song, which someone was singing, reached her faintly, and kindly sparrows were twittering in the eaves. There are patches of blue sky, showing here, and there rode the clouds that. Had met the pale one above the other in the west facing her window. She sat with her head thrown back upon the cushion of the chair, quiet, motionless, except when a sob came up into her throat and shook her, as a child who has cried itself. To sleep continues to sob in its dreams. She was young, with a fair, calm face, who lines best bespoke repression and even a certain strength. But now there was a dull stare in her eyes, whose gaze was fixed, away off yonder on one of those patches of blue sky. It was not a drench of reflection, but rather indicated a suspicion of intelligent thought. There was something coming to her, and she was waiting for it fearfully. What was it? She didn't know. It was too subtle and elusive to name, but she felt it creeping out of the sky, reaching toward her room. The sounds, the scents, the color that filled the air. Now her bosom rose and fell tumultuously. She was beginning to recognize the, these things that was approaching to possess her, and she was striving to beat it back 
with her will, as powerless as her to white slander, hence would have been. When she abandoned, abandoned herself, a little whispered word escaped her slightly pared lips. She said it over and over under the breath. Free, free, free. The fashion stare and the look of terror that had followed it went from her eyes. They stayed keen and bright. Her pulses beat fast, and the coursing blood warmed and relaxed every inch of her body. She didn't stop to ask if we were of or were not a monstrous joy that held her. A clear and exalted perception enabled her to dismiss the suggestion as driver. She knew, she knew that she would wept again when she saw the kind, tender hands folded in death. The face that had never looked save with love up upon love upon her, fixed and grey and deep. But she saw beyond that bitter moment a long procession of years to come that would belong to her absolutely. And she opened and spread her arms. Her arms out to them in welcome. There would be no one to live for during those coming years. She would live for herself. There would be no powerful will bending hers in that blind persistence with which men and women believe that they have a right to impose a private will upon a fellow creature. A kind intention or a cruel intention met. The act seem no less a crime as this as she looked upon it in that brief moment of illumination. And, she yet, and yet she had loved him sometimes, or when she had not. What did it matter? What could love the unsolved mystery? Comfort in the face of this possession of self-assertion, which she suddenly recognized as the strongest impulse of her being. Free, body and soul free, she kept whispering. Josephine was kneeling before the closed door with her lips to the keloid imploring for admission. Lost, open the door. Back, open the door. You will make yourself ill. What are you doing, Lois? For heaven's sake, open the door. Go away. I'm not making myself ill. No, she was drinking in very elixir of live room that open window. Her fancy was running riot along those days ahead of her. Spring days and summer days and all sorts of days that would be her own. She breathed a quick prayer that life might be long. It was only yesterday she had though with a shudder that life might be long. She arose as she arose at length and opened the door to her sister's importunities. There was a feverish term in her eyes and she carried herself unwittingly like a goddess of factory. She clasped her sister waist and together they descended the stairs. Richard stood waiting for them at the bottom. Someone was opening the front door with a latch key. It was Branley Mallard who entered. A leather traveled steam, pompously carrying his grip sack and umbrella. He had been far from the scene of the accident and did not even know there had been one. He stood amazed at Isabel's 
piercing cry at Richard's quick motion to screen him from the view of his wife. When the doctors come, they said she had died of her disease, of the joy that kills. Earlier, I point out that this story was first published in 1894 as the dream of an hour on our before being republished. Having read the story, why do you suppose Kate Copin just to change that one word? Okay. Uh, I think enough for me. Thank you for nice attention. And last I say, wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.